continue our teaching session uh, about the church that Jesus is building. In this session, we want to begin by talking about uh, the fact that the church uh, is alive, it's living. Uh, Turn to 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5. Uh, Alright, 1 Peter 2 chapter 2 verse 5. 第二章第五节，第二章第五节，你们来到主面前，也就像活石被建造成为灵宫，做圣洁的祭司，借着耶稣基督奉献神所悦纳的灵祭。I'm not sure what the Chinese translation how it words it in the King James. It says that uh, we are lively stones, and uh, that means we're living stones in in the Greek. 呃，在英文的呃，在呃圣经里面讲到，我们是那啊活石。So uh, the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones, the church is made up of living stones. 所以教会是被那些活石所建造的。In other words, each of us are are a rock, so to speak, in the illustration here, are a stone that makes up the the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we Paul in his writings uh, illustrated the church as the body of Christ with Christ being the head. And that we as members in particular of the body, some function in the body, uh, he likens that to the, uh, the anatomy of, of the human body. Now Peter gives a different kind of illustration in the passage we just read. He said Jesus is building a spiritual house. And each of us are living stones that make up that house. It's a similar illustration. Paul said each of us have functions as, as like fingers or ears or eyes or something in the human body. Peter says you're like stones in the spiritual house. You remember in the Old Testament scripture the illustration when uh, uh, the Israelites were rebuilding the temple. And the scripture says that uh, rocks were used to, to build the temple. These rocks would be like huge stones. And the scripture says that the rocks were hewn or cut and sawed in a rock quarry. Because the temple had a specific design given by God, they knew exactly how many stones and what shape they should be. So we might say the building of the temple, uh, God had a time and a place for the temple to be in existence, was very much like the design that uh, he gave to them, this is the way to build the temple. Uh, 
And so the workers would cut or saw the stones to their proper shape. Then they would bring them to the temple ground where they were to be placed to build the temple. And when they got to the temple grounds, they fit perfectly, exactly the way they were designed. So Peter's illustration of the building of the church is like stones that are being cut and hewn and shaped to be placed into the habitation or building of the spiritual house. So when Jesus said, I will build my church, he was speaking like Paul, saying, uh, I'm the head and the church is the body. <coughs> and he's saying that like Peter is illustrating, Jesus said, I am the one who hews and cuts and saws the, the stones and puts the, I put them in place. So it takes all of us as living stones to make up the church of Jesus Christ. So this is Peter's way of illustrating what the word ecclesia means or the called out ones. I might share this testimony with you at this point. <coughs> Before I came uh, to minister to you as a teacher, uh, the Lord uh, told me something about this passage that we're reading here. Uh, he said that for many years he had been cutting and sawing and hewing my life into a particular shape of a stone that when I got to China, it fit in place. So it is with the building of the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though all of you are very young compared to, to me, God is in the process of cutting and hewing and sawing in your life to make you into the shape He wants you to be so that you can fit into the building of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church. The Bible gives another illustration uh, rather than cutting and hewing. It talks about us being like uh, a, a vine or a growing something that is pruned, uh, cut away uh, to make us the shape that we ought to be. The scripture says that the Lord is like a husbandman or one who tends the, uh, the garden. He comes along and he sees something in your life and mine that shouldn't be there, he cuts it out. And 
他要把那些枝子剪成他喜喜喜悦的样式。Or we're like living stones that the the Lord、uh, cuts and hewns and saws into its proper shape. 呃，或者说我们像一块石头，原原来的一块呃，是活石，但是是一块原来的呃，没有被修剪过石头。但是神把我们用用刀呃，用锯子锯呃，把它弄成神要我们的形状。The reason I emphasize this is because. Any time God prunes my life, or He cut, cuts and saws and hewns, it hurts. Uh, 我要跟你们讲的就是每一次呃， uh, 当神来修剪我这个这个枝子，修剪我的这块我石头，把我呃呃、uh, uh, 切掉，把我锯掉的时候，呃、uh, ，那个时候很痛。It's sort of like、uh, being disciplined by、uh, your parents. 就好像被父母来管教一样。I told those of you who were here in earlier sessions、uh, that my father, earthly father, died when I was four years of age. Uh, 我想我跟你们当中有一些呃、uh, 分享过我自己的父亲在呃、uh, 在我四岁的时候呃、uh, 过去过世 So I don't really remember very much, if anything, about my father. 所以我我对他没有什么印象 So my mother reared me. And she was the one who disciplined me when I did something wrong. So I, from childhood, my mother brought me up. If I did something wrong, it was her who disciplined me. And when she had to、uh, spank me, she would say, "Honey, this hurts me more than it does you." So every time she hit me, she would say, "Son, I hurt you. It hurts your heart. It hurts your heart." And I never could understand that because it really hurt me. He said, "I always didn't understand this because it really hurt me." But now that I'm a father and I have had to discipline my children, I understand it. But now that I'm a father and I have had to discipline my sons when they were young, I knew what she meant because I didn't really want to have to discipline them like that. Now, now, I'm really feeling this when I'm talking about my mother's words. When I was my own child, I would discipline them when they were little. I knew what she meant because I didn't really want to have to The pain will be more than the pain in your body. But God commands us as parents, and when you become parents, God commands that we train and discipline our children in the admonition of the Lord. In the Bible, God tells us we are to discipline our children, to follow the instruction of God, to discipline our children. And he said, "If you, the proverb says, if you spare the rod, you will spoil the child. If you spare the the discipline in the child's life, you will spoil the child." 他说：“当你圣经上说你呃用杖打责打你的孩子的时候，你是呃你就呃就是教导他。当你不你不责打他的时候，你就是宠坏他。” So throughout our Christian life, a loving heavenly Father is always pruning out the things that are not of Him, and He's cutting and sawing and hewing. So he's doing it because he loves us. He's trying to shape us into that stone that fits properly into the the church, the household of, of faith, or the spiritual house. So, 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 So you and I are a part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, likened by Peter here as living stones. So you and I are a part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, likened by Peter here as living stones. So you and I are a part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, likened by Peter here as living stones. So you and I are a part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, likened by Peter here as living stones. So you and I are a part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, likened by Peter here as living stones. 所以非常重要，就是我们要知道我们在教会中的作用和我们的地位是什么。Or to know what our gifting is. 哎，而且知道我们的恩赐是什么。Because Jesus, the the build of the church, takes you or me as a stone, and he says, "Here's where you belong," and he he cuts and hews and puts us in place. 啊，所以耶稣基督这个教会的建造者呢，他按照我们每一个人的呃样式。他知道，他把我们修剪成他样式、喜悦的样式以后，就把我们放在那当当放的地方。So in order for the spiritual house to be built correctly, 
We need to know who we are. We need to know what stone we are, so the Lord can put us there where we belong. So, so again, Peter is saying that the church is made up of people. It's living. It's like living stones. He's not talking about just old rocks out there. He's talking about living stones. So Another truth about Jesus building the kind of church he designs is that the church is a remnant. Uh, turn to Romans uh, 11.5. A remnant uh, is a, a small uh, group of people, if you're talking about people. So it says uh, that we, the church, is made up of a remnant according to the election of God's grace. You know, uh, Jesus said, many are called, but few are chosen. This is a principle that's very important for you to understand. And that is, the church is made up of a remnant people. God has always worked with a remnant people or a small group of people. You remember, for example, uh, when God called Gideon to take an army to, to go defeat the enemy. They started out with several thousands of, of army soldiers. But God said, no, that's too many. Uh, and God, excuse me. God told Gideon how to get it down to a remnant. Uh, so, so one of the first things he said was uh, tell the soldiers that are afraid, fearful, to go home. So a lot of the soldiers left. But God said there's still too many. So he said take them down to uh, the water edge and uh, tell them to drink water. And he said, those that dip their head in the water, uh, tell them to go home. But those that take their hands and lap it up and watch while they're drinking, tell them to stay. So out of several thousand people, Gideon's army finally got, got down to about 300 people, or 300 soldiers. So this is an example of a remnant group. This is an example of how God works with fewer people rather than the large numbers of people. One of the reasons God uh, sort of took away a lot of the soldiers and sent them back home was 
that if a lot of soldiers went out to war, when the battle was won, they'd say, we won the battle. But if a few went out to fight it, they would have to say, the Lord is the one who won the battle. So that's what the Lord does in building His church. That's the reason, like, um, uh, in China, I understand that you may have, I believe, presently about 1 billion, 300 million is the last figure I saw, population. And uh, again, statistically, that there may be a uh, hundred million or so believers in China. That would be a remnant compared to the larger number. Or just like in America, uh, we have, uh, what is it, Jeff, 250 million or 270 million or something like that uh, in America. Uh, and uh, a small percentage of that number would actually be Christian people. I'm just giving you some modern illustrations of what we mean by remnant, that there are a lot of people, uh, but God chooses a remnant people. Another illustration in scripture, you remember when uh, they sent the uh, 12 spies uh, to spy out the land. Uh, Moses sent uh, these 12 in and he gave them instructions and told them what to look for and, and bring samples of some of the produce and so forth out. And so they went into the land to spy out the land. And you know when they came back to report, uh, ten of them said, uh, we can't go into that land and we'll be defeated because we're like grasshoppers compared to those people. But uh, Joshua and Caleb, you remember, said, Oh yes, we're well able to overtake the land because God is our victor. He is our warrior. So the story of the twelve spies is an illustration of a remnant. Ten gave one report, but a remnant numbering two gave the correct report. Another illustration would be in the life of the, the young lad David. <coughs> You remember the story of the uh, Philistine giant? That he stood on the mountain and he cried out with a loud voice and defied the army of Israel. And Israel had a large army a lot, and uh, so the giant uh, Goliath uh, uh, sort of gave a challenge to Israel and said, send out one person to fight me, and if he wins, then we're defeated. If I win, you're our slaves. And out of all of those uh, soldiers, no one wanted to go fight Goliath. 
，那在呃以色列的军队里面，没有一个人敢去跟那个哥利亚征战那个军人。And you remember David, who was just a, probably a teenager at this time,、uh, was just a shepherd of sheep. And he said, "I'll go." Uh, you When he heard Goliath defying a god, he said, "What are you doing, standing here,、uh, hesitating? Somebody needs to go kill that giant."、Mm. 当他听了那个哥哥利亚那个巨人在那污蔑神的名的时候，呃，他他就说，呃，总有一个人要去跟他征战的。But they couldn't find anybody in the army that was willing to do that. 呃，他们在军队里面，在以色列的军队里面找不到一个人可以去去跟他征战。That's when David volunteered and said, "I'll go." 所以那个就是那个时候，呃呃，大卫就说，我去。And you remember the story how?、Uh, Uh, King Saul、uh, thought he was helping David, so he dressed David up in all this heavy armor and put on this breastplate and all this kind of thing. Poor little David was just weighted down with all this metal. Ah, you remember? Remember, Saul 王那时候他想说 ，OK， 你要去跟那个大巨人打仗，你是个小孩，我就把那大那那些军队呃的那个军装啊，那好重的铁甲啦，什么呃大枪都。And the sword was so heavy he could hardly hold it, you know. 那个那个刀那好重，他根本就抬不起来。And、uh, so he was expected to go out in all this normal armor to defeat the giant. 他大卫王呃，那扫罗就说你穿了这样的衣服去跟那个哥利亚打仗吧。And David said, if if you let me do it God's way, the way God has trained me. I can beat that giant, but if you send me out like that, I can't even walk. I can't even move. I will say, you just, 如果你让我出去按照神的旨意、神的意思出去的话，我还可以去跟他打仗。如果你把我穿成这么重，我走路都不能走，我没有办法去跟他打仗。打。And David's method of defeating the giant was an illustration like the the remnant. The whole large army of Israel, no one would go, but a remnant, illustrated by David, said, "I will kill him the way God has trained me to do it." 嗯，呃，大卫他如你看以以色列军队那么多人，没有一个人敢去跟哥利亚打仗。那那如果说大卫是就用就按照他们那个方式去的话，大呃而不按照神的意思去的话。Because the Lord had trained David as a little boy,、uh, as a shepherd boy,、uh, to use a slingshot uh, and uh, some rocks. Uh, David, in his youth, from the shepherd's nest, he was trained to use a stick. Uh, and the stick was 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 a stick. Uh, 从小被训练的就是用他那个弹弓跟石头来打那个熊啊、老虎、呃、狮子之类。So when David took off all this heavy armor and just went out there in his regular clothes with a little slingshot and some rocks, the giant just laughed. 所以当大卫说我不能穿这些这重的武呃这军装，他把它脱掉以后，他他他只带着一个小弹弓跟石头去的时候，那个那个哥利亚就哎笑他，讥笑他。He just、uh, scoffed at the armies of Israel and said, "Why do you send a little boy out here to do a man's job?" He, uh, Goliath, 对着以色列军队说，你们为什么送一个小孩子来做一个呃成年人做的事情呢 ？But you know, the key to David's、uh, power and、uh, ability to kill the giant was not David's ability, but he he spoke of giving God the glory. It is God who will defeat you this day. Uh, David, uh. 做这样的事情，他说不是按照呃人的意思，他他是按照神的意思。You know, as, as I'm telling this story, the Spirit reminds me of a lot of times those of us with different giftings, when people try to put a gifting on us that's not who we are, and they say, "Well, you're a teacher, but you know you're not a teacher, and the Spirit hadn't told you you're a teacher, but they put all this armor on you, and you try to be a teacher." Uh, it's all like David trying to go out and fight a battle with an armor that didn't belong to him. Uh, 圣灵这样告诉我，现在就在这个时候讲这些例子给你们听的时候，圣灵告诉我说，这这些情形就好像呃，在呃教会中人人告诉你说，哦，你有这样子的恩赐
，所以人家就把这样子的军装加在你身上，要你去做一些事情。其实这些这些事情不是神要给你的恩赐。One of the ways that you can know that you are walking in your gifting is because you just feel the supernatural power to do it. it it's a, it's easy in the sense of the spiritual sense. 有的时候我们就好像按照我们这个呃超自然、超超超呃呃超自然的这种呃呃恩赐去做的时候，呃，就好像呃就很很容易的做在当中。Uh, when you flow in your gifting. You just know I'm doing what God called me to do. I'm fulfilling God's eternal purpose for my life. So you, 顺着圣灵感动啊，做这些呃事情的时候，你知道这是圣灵啊给你的，告诉你你这样是你是对的事情。When I come to Africa or China or wherever the Lord sends me, when I'm doing the apostle work as a sent out one. Uh, I'm energized. Uh, it's it's something that's natural. It's supernatural, but it feels natural to me. Uh, 当我被呃送到呃各地，送到非洲去的时候，呃，那呃我我在做一些使徒的工作，呃，就非常的自然从我身上呃就流出来。My brother Jeff uh, gives testimony that、uh, when he's at home, especially in America, but where he lives. Uh, that he doesn't sense the purpose in his life. It's when he goes to Mexico or when he goes to Africa, which he's been, or when he comes to China, that that's who he is. That's what God has called him to do. Uh, one of brother Jeff, he he 跟我分享过说他呃在自己家乡的教会的时候，有时候他还没有呃有感觉到他那样子的恩赐。当他被神差遣出去到呃各地去到呃呃中国到。呃，墨西哥去的时候，他特别知道神给他呃哪一方面这方面的恩赐。So if if someone told me that my gifting was something other than the gifting of the apostle, it would be like putting all this armor on me, and I might be able to struggle and, and get out there,、mm-hmm. but I really couldn't do what God called me to do. 当所以当有人是告诉我说我我有使徒的恩赐或或者什么恩赐的时候，呃，把那个军装。加在我身上，一定要我做成那个样子的时候，我有时候不能够做神的工作。So again, I say that's why it's so important that we come to know for sure who we are in the body of Christ, so we can function the way God intended. 所以很重要，我们必须知道我们神给我们的恩赐是什么，所以我们能够在他神的工作上能够做的很有效。So you know the end of the story of David. He、uh, Took that slingshot and he put the stone in it, and he hit the giant right in the right place. The giant、uh, was killed and fell to the ground, and Israel、uh, defeated the Philistines. And it wasn't the mass of the army that did it; it was a remnant person, David, that did it by God's power. So, when we read that story, uh, David just used a stone, a small stone, a 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 stone, 出去就把那巨人打倒的时候，呃，我们知道这个这个是神的工作，是这个，而且大卫不是靠着那么大的军队去以色列军队去打败非利士人，乃是呃靠着这个所拣选的少的余数。Let me give you a, a reference to a New Testament illustration of a remnant. 呃，我们在新约里面，我们再来看一些什么叫余数的例子。You remember on one occasion Jesus was uh, uh, preaching uh, to the multitudes of people. Ah, 你们记得有一次耶稣对着一大群人来传道。And he began to challenge them about following him as a disciple. Ah, 他有一次呃，就是向他们挑战说，你们要跟随我做我的呃呃门徒。He said some things like,、uh, "If you want to be my disciple, you need to de- de- to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me." He said, "You 们要呃，谁愿意要做我的门徒，必须呃呃，舍弃自己。" He was calling them to、uh, denial and sacrifice. He said, "You 们必须要呃，舍弃自己，自自己，背起你们的十字架来跟从我。” He said, "If you're going to be my disciple,、uh, you can't take the plow and start plowing the field and turn back. You're not worthy if you do that." That 扶着犁头，犁头往后看的人不配做我的门徒
He said, if you're not willing to put me first in your life, uh, you're not worthy to be a disciple. He said, you must love your father and mother and, and your kinfolk less than you love me. In other words, Jesus needs to be first. He said a hard word like, uh, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you're not worthy to be my follower. And when Jesus said things like this, something happened, and that was that many of the massive crowd began to go away and leave Jesus. Instead of there being a large number of followers, now only a remnant remained. And Jesus said to those who, who stayed behind as a remnant, He said, Will you also go away? And the disciples said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. That's one of the places he said, many are called, but few are chosen. So I'm illustrating to you what it means for the church to be made up of a remnant people. We would all love and, and be delighted and joyful if everyone in our nation trusted Jesus Christ as Savior. Or every person in a village where we preach the gospel, if all of them accepted Christ. Our desire should be for every member of the family to become a Christian. And that's the heart of God as well. Scripture says that God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to eternal life. But the fact is, not everyone, not the majority, are going to receive the good news of the gospel. So you need to know that the church that Jesus is building is built out of a remnant people. That will encourage you as you go out in mission work or evangelism work, building churches, uh, to know that not everyone that you preach the gospel to is going to accept the gospel. But don't be discouraged by that because that's a principle of the scripture. God works with a remnant people. Something else that will help you to understand about the principle of a remnant people. Well, the scripture illustrates it like this. It says that as we come to the end of, of the age prior to the coming of Jesus, <laughs> that uh, there will be, this is in the Revelation passage, there will be like two different kinds of, of churches in the last days. There will be a Laodicean church and there will be a Philadelphia type church. Uh, 
是老底加的教会，老底加。So, you, just in summary, the Philadelphia Church、uh, is a church that has the open door, and they're faithful as witnesses、uh, to the Lord, and、uh, they're strong in the Lord, and they they love the Lord, and they have a great love for for Christ and His kingdom. 呃，菲拉铁非教会，他们呃，他们的门是开到的，但是他们又，而且他们又爱神，他们也也呃为神所呃，他们门是敞开的。The Laodicean Church, on the other hand,、uh, are lukewarm. They're neither hot nor cold. 呃，老底加教会是那个不冷不热的教会。And they think they're rich and don't have any needs at all. 他们认为他们很富足。And of course, you know the judgment of, of Jesus、uh, concerning this church. He said, "I'll spew you or spit you out of my mouth." Ah,、uh, 我们也知道耶稣基督讲到这个这样子的教会不冷不热的教会的时候，他说我会将你们从我的嘴中吐出去。Ah,、uh, in my spirit, in these last days, I see the China Church as an example of the Philadelphia Church. That is the open door and the love of the Lord and the spirit of evangelism that you have. 呃，我看到这个中国的教会，在我呃这呃这几次的呃看见当中，中国的教会是像呃菲拉铁非的教会，是门是打开的，是爱主的，是呃愿意传福音的教会。And in other countries of the world, there are remnant Christians、uh, who have a fervor for the Lord, and they're evangelistic and missionary and reaching out to their people to lead them to Christ.、Uh, 在许多其他教会的呃其他国家的教会当中，我看他们呃呃是像呃也是像这样，也是他们很热心的呃传福音呃呃带人信主。That's my heart, and I know it's your heart. 这是我的心，我的心意，我的心愿，我相信也是你们的心愿。But at the same time today, there is a larger number, or there are larger numbers of people. Uh, that make up a church much like Laodicea. Uh, 可是有许多的教会，许许多多的教会是，他们是其实是像老底加教老底加教会一样。Uh, they're neither hot nor cold. 他们也不冷也不热。And they think they're rich and have need of nothing. 他们认为他们很富足，他们不需要什么东西了。But Jesus said to the Laodicean church, which speaks to the church today. That you are poor and naked and blind. 可是，呃，主对他们说，呃，对着老底加教会说，哦，其实你们是困苦的、可怜的、贫穷的、瞎眼的、刺身的。As I travel、uh, around the world to different countries, I see both of these churches side by side. 呃，当我在在全世界旅行的时候，看他各地的教会的时候，我看到这两种教会都存在。The Laodicean type church tends to be uh, uh, just accepting and receiving any teaching, any doctrine.、Uh, everybody's going to heaven.、Uh, Jesus isn't the way; he's just a way. Uh, like Laodicea Church, is they accept all kinds of uh 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 teaching, all kinds of uh 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 doctrine as their teaching. They they tend not to keep the commandments of the Lord. They sort of just do what they think is right or right in their own eyes. They don't follow the world's teaching. They just do what they think is right or right in their own eyes. They don't follow the world's teaching. They just do what they think is right or right in their own eyes. They don't follow the world's teaching. They just do what they think is right or right in their own eyes. They don't follow the world's teaching. They just do what they think is right or right in their own eyes. They don't follow the world's teaching. They just do what they think is right or right in their own eyes. They don't follow the world's teaching. They just do what they think is right or right in their own eyes. They don't follow the world's teaching. They just do what they think is right or right in their own eyes. They don't follow the world's teaching. They just do what they think is right or right in their own eyes. They don't follow the world's This is one of the、uh, grave problems of the American church,、uh, and to some extent, the entire Western church. He said, "This is one of the grave problems of the American church, and to some extent, the entire Western church." He said, "This is one of the grave problems of the American church, and to some extent, the entire Western church." He said, "This is one of the grave problems of the American church, and to some extent, the entire Western church." He said, "This is one of the grave problems of the American church." Uh, we put millions and millions of dollars into structure and into buildings, rather than devoting that to the needs of people. Because we have a wrong view of the church. We think that the church is just a building, and we put millions and millions of dollars into structure and into buildings, rather than devoting that to the needs of people. Because we have a wrong view of the church. We think that the church is just a building, and we put millions and millions of dollars into structure and into buildings, rather than devoting that to the needs of people. Because we have a wrong view of the church. We think that the church is just a building, and we put millions and millions of dollars into structure and into buildings, rather than devoting that to the needs of people. Because we have a wrong view of the church. We think that the church is just a building, and we put millions and millions of dollars into structure and into buildings, rather than devoting that to the needs of people. 
And that's what happens when you say that the church is a building rather than the church is a remnant people of God. The American church is uh, gravely uh, guilty of this. Throughout America, there are huge uh, buildings, beautiful, ornate, uh, multi-million dollar buildings, because the emphasis is upon the material and the building rather than upon the people. When you travel, uh, if you have opportunity sometime in the future, I've traveled throughout Europe, for example, and uh, there are huge uh, uh, cathedrals that have been built over the years and uh, have no idea what they cost to build, but they're huge uh, stone uh, cathedrals. And today, those cathedrals may have 14 people huddled in the front uh, of the building uh, because the people no longer attend church or, or participate in the assembly. Cathedral,就是教堂,教堂,那那个教堂非常的华美,里面被许多的经营雕刻,呃,呃,呃,建造成的,可是,呃,里面通常只做了十几个人,少数的几个人坐在里面,非常的冷清,因为人都不到教
呃，就像我这个年龄，神仍然差遣我到一些呃地方去去传福音。Uh, years ago,、uh, he sent me to uh, uh, Eastern Europe, but Eastern Europe was a divided、uh, country, and、uh, to Eastern Berlin to, to minister there, and that was a very frightening experience because of the the type of government they had at the time. Uh, a few years ago, God sent me to the Eastern Europe, to Berlin, to preach. In that time, Berlin was still a very scary place. He has sent me to、uh, Israel and to Gaza. At a time which still is, but at that time it was very dangerous, and、uh, I nearly got shot while I was there. Uh, 神也把我差遣到呃、uh, 以色列加沙走廊那个地方，那个地方常常有征战，以色列人跟巴勒斯坦人常常有征战，我差点都被呃枪呃杀呃枪杀到。Uh, he sent me to、uh, South Africa when the apartheid government was in control. 他把我送到南非去。That just illustrates what God will do to open the window for us to serve Him. 这次呃一些例子就是神会帮我们开那个门，让我们去去来侍奉他。That concludes this portion of our study. 呃，我们今这堂课结束在这里。Amen. Amen.